two months after the capsizing of the Rockness, the upside down wreckage has been towed to port and the heavy work of salvage begins. Was the disaster caused by pilot error? Or was the top heavy ship simply too unstable? Investigators believe the answers may be recorded on the ship's computers. Some have been recovered by divers. Others are still inside the hull. Computer engineer Oyvind Nieland was in charge of the data recovery. This is definitely a race against time. Salt will start to kind of corrode the drive really hard, and then it gets really difficult to get the data out. Before they can board the ship, the rockness needs to be turned upright in a process known as parbuckling. Parbuckling has rarely been done on a ship this size. It will take a fleet of heavy tugboats and a 900-ton floating crane. And if a cable snaps or a winch jams, it could be a disaster. It takes two days to roll the big ship over. Then the next phase of the operation can begin, recovering the ship's computers. Each one has a different story to tell. You have the navigation computers and you have your loading computers. They are very interesting from our point of view as evidence. The navigation data should reveal exactly where the ship went off course and whether the pilot is to blame. And the loading data will have crucial information about the stability of the ship. It takes repeated trips to the ruined bridge to find all the computers. The computers are in rough shape. They're rushed to Neelan's lab, where the delicate job of data recovery can finally begin. Keep working on that. Neelan's team carefully cleans and dries out the electronics. Then they start the painstaking process of determining how much data has survived. Reconstructing the data takes weeks. They won't know if they've been successful until the final downloads are complete. And it works. That was quite a moment for the team. Great work. We then knew that we could provide the data to figure this out. With the newly recovered data in hand, the team wastes no time piecing together the evidence. Pilots rely on special maps or charts that include information about the depth of the water. It allows them to stay in the safe zone down the center and avoid any rocky shallows lurking below the surface. Investigators study every detail of the ship's progress before it ran aground. Did the pilot steer Rockness dangerously off course? Or will the data confirm his story that whatever he hit, it wasn't marked on his chart? Look at all these course changes. They immediately noticed something unusual. For some reason, the pilot made many tiny course corrections instead of a few larger turns. Coming up on the shallows. Let's go five degrees port rudder, please. On his final turn into Vattelstraumen Passage, his strategy seems to backfire. Bear. Looks like he started his turn too late. So if he started too late, the ship comes too much to the south. That means he came into the red sector. This is, this is for sure. The late turn took the rockness at least 75 feet outside the safe zone. What it doesn't explain is why. Was the pilot being reckless? Or was something else going on in the final moments before the disaster?